Let me just tell one more incident that really was a catalyst in, in, in my life and, and in what we do. I'm in Salem, Massachusetts, and I'm talking to the head witch of New England. He's a big boy. He's like six foot four, 340, 50 pounds, big. And he's done everything he can to look like a witch. I mean, he's tattooed his cuticles, he's, he's inked his fingernails, he's tattooed eyeliner, not just eyeliner, but tattooed eyeliner. All the stuff, and so I'm talking to him, and as I'm, as I'm talking to him, we're, we're facing each other, he turns away from me about the middle of a 45-minute conversation. He goes, and he keeps talking. And I think he's talking to me. I'm not sure if he's talking to a demon or talking to me at first. But then he kind of turns and says, pardon me for, I don't want to be rude, but the light coming from you hurts my eyes. And, and I keep hearing these voices that say, curse him, curse him, curse him. And he said, but you seem like such a nice, loving man. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and so he says, if you don't mind, I'll just turn away and we can keep talking. So I said, okay. <laughs> so we kept talking. I'm talking to his back and he's talking <laughs> to me. During the conversation, I, uh, he, at the end of it, he turns around to face me, and I, I said, before I leave, can I just ask you a question? I said, what, what made you become a witch? He says, well, you won't believe it. I said, well, try me. I've heard a lot. He said, okay. He said, I was raised in church. In fact, I was accepted by Ramah Bible College to go to Ramah. I go, no, lie? He goes, no, true. He said, do you know it? I said, yeah, I'm very familiar with it. I said, what happened? He said, well, the summer before I was to enroll at Rhema, between my senior year and my freshman year, I had, a, I had a spiritual experience. It was the most powerful thing that ever happened to me. It was, it was so amazing to me. And so I went to my pastor and I said, Pastor, this is what's happened to me. What, what happened? What is this? And my pastor looked at me and said, God doesn't speak that way anymore. That was the devil. He said, I pushed back from his desk, stood up, walked to the door, and said, I've seen more power in this than I've ever seen in this church. I'm going to go find the devil. He said, I walked out the door, and I found him. I said, tell me what happened. If you don't mind, would you just tell me what happened? And he tells me what happens, and I said, I called him by name, and I said, do you know? I said, look, that was from God calling you to be a pastor. He was telling you, you had a, a gift to understand spiritual things, that you have a gift to rally people to a cause, that you have a gift to bring people into a, an entirely new destination than where they were. I said, do you understand this is God calling you to the ministry, not to this? And in just a moment, I saw a tear drop down his cheek, and he goes, I know, but it's too late now. He died four months later from a drug overdose. Now, the good news is that in that four months, he started hanging out with, with our team and our interns. They're in Salem. And he began to, to talk to us about God. And in fact, on Halloween, when he's supposed to be at this large orgy, he refused to go because he was enjoying talking to us more. In fact, he asked my interns if, he could, if they would call his mom just to prove that he was in church on Halloween and not in some bed on Halloween. His mom's a Christian, started crying, weeping on, on the phone. 
he began to hang out more and more with us, and the police suspect that he, that he was actually injected with an overdose because he was getting too close. I believe he actually probably came to know the Lord. 